What is a sheath? In layman's terms, or in ninja orchid's terms, it is any structure that grows around another to protect what is forming or growing within. That is what I consider a sheath, and I appreciate the fact that you are interested in this video, and what my opinion is about them, and what I do with my sheaths. Do I take them off? Do I cut them? And here you see now a reed stem epidendrum, and you're sort of thinking, well, that's not the sheath that you would consider a sheath. But there are sheaths everywhere around our orchids. Sometimes they're called bracts, and mainly that is when we talk about the bracts protecting a pseudobulb, the bracts protecting the beginning of a new growth, but they are also in actual fact sheaths. So we are normally used to seeing sheaths in the form of a cattleya that is forming buds within or not, but there's more sheaths around our orchids. And I wanna to touch base on that today. And I have a whole gaggle of examples on the floor here because my staging area isn't exactly big enough. I just wanted to give as comprehensive a breakdown of what a sheath is as possible and where they are found and why they are there. And then sometimes you hear about cutting a sheath open to expose the buds. So I'm gonna get the reed stem epidendrum kind of sheath out of the way. When a new growth grows on any plant, any orchid as such, there is always some kind of protective covering around the base of the orchid to protect the new growth. It can be protected from bugs, but it can be an attraction to bugs. The new growths are so fine, so tender, they are the most nutritious part of the orchid because all the hormones are being directed into that area for the orchid to grow a new structure. Bugs love that. They are tender, juicy. They are packed with minerals and all the good stuff that a bug would like to enjoy. And because of their tenderness, they can easily penetrate the surface without having to work so hard. So in a case of reed stem epidendrums, as the structures grow higher and higher and higher, you get more and more sheaths forming around the stem to protect what is inside, what is forming, until it is strong enough, big enough, and old enough to stand on its own. In nature, there's nobody around to peel the sheaths off. I try to get in there and sometimes peel them off as best as I can. But as you can see, it's really, really difficult to actually do a really good job with reed stem epidendrums because the sheaths are so tough based on the structure that they are growing underneath. In some cases, it's an aesthetical thing, and in other cases, it's definitely a bug preventative measure to try and peel the sheaths off, but it is not a must. Where it is hot and humid, the sheaths eventually will fall off on their own. Out in nature, they will soften up and in time start to peel off by themselves. If the conditions are not there in our private cultivation, then, you know, we do go in and, well, I do, and start to peel them off bit by bit. But normally when it comes to the reed stem epidendrum, I am not that pedantic about it. It's just a test. It's a good thing to go in and have a look if there's any bugs being harbored and hosted underneath. And if there isn't, then there's really no need to go in and remove the entire sheath because at the end of the day, you don't want to be doing damage to the structure as such being too radical to get something so tough off the stem. So just to clarify, sheaths on our orchids are pretty much everywhere where something grows new and needs to be protected from the elements, from the bugs. That includes too much light. So here are sheaths that we would normally attribute the word sheath for when we talk about our orchids, especially when it comes to cattleyas. Most of the time, buds form inside of a sheath, not all of the time. Sometimes spikes will come straight out of the top of the pseudobulb and grow buds. It is not necessary to have a sheath for an orchid to bloom. However, it is also not necessarily going to bloom just because it has produced a sheath, which is very frustrating. Hence, it's a blind sheath. It's blind, A, because it is empty, not because it is brown. 
You can see that the sheath can stay nice and green, but still be blind because there's nothing in it. How to know whether there's something in it is to very, very gently go around the base and just have a little bit of a feel around the base. And if there's a little bit of a bulge, you can feel it. Don't squeeze it. You'll crush the buds if they're forming in there. Just have a little bit of a feel to see if there's a different structure inside. If there isn't, then it's a blind sheath. Now a blind sheath on some orchids, not all the time, when it goes brown, it will not bloom again. That's it. It's not like, oh well, this was last year's growth and eventually it will form buds. It's over, this is a blind sheath. The next growth then it produces and the sheath is still green, it can also still be a blind sheath and with time it will brown and then there won't be any blooms coming out of that because the next growth will be starting. And a sheath doesn't have to stay green in order for buds to form. But it is not a guarantee that anything that produced a sheath in past years, even though it was blind up to a point, will start to bloom. The reason we get blind sheaths is because the orchid is maybe not mature enough, doesn't have enough energy to produce any kinds of buds. Again, something to do with maturity or there's not enough structures in the orchid to produce the energy so that she can form buds. So this is a blooming size pastoral innocence, but it is possible that she needs more structures in order to have energy to produce buds within the next sheath. But in the meantime, a blooming size orchid producing sheaths will form blind sheaths also if she's not getting enough light. You see that I've tried to give mine enough light and I've burnt her. But still, that is part of getting to know your orchid. Just know that as the orchid matures and grows, it's possible that the next growth will also produce a sheath and that growth might bloom, but it doesn't mean that in the subsequent years, eventually these sheaths will bloom. A blind sheath is a blind sheath, it will stay blind. It can also produce buds inside the sheath and be called a blind sheath, but the buds will die in there. And that's, that's when it's also a blind sheath. It works two ways. Buds can die inside of a sheath also for several reasons. Too high humidity, no airflow. Pests can dig their way in through the structure of the sheath and destroy the buds. And rot can set in as well. So a sheath is not a guarantee that your orchid is going to bloom simply because it is functioning as a protective cover for buds. There is no guarantee and blind sheaths for us are simply a sign that, well, she's trying and hopefully the next time around she will have enough energy to push buds. So I was just talking about dried sheaths and not producing buds, but that is if it's a blind sheath. You can see that here is a dried up sheath and the same orchid has a nice green sheath. This one has dried up and it is full of buds. So what I'm trying to show you here is that certain orchids will have dried up sheaths but still produce buds. The sheath doesn't have to be green to induce flowering. And that is just a case by case situation with every orchid. In this case here, I cut my sheath. I normally do not cut my sheath. So let's talk about that. Cutting sheath is there to help the orchid release the buds so that they don't get scrunched up. But I don't do that on a regular basis because it also exposes the buds inside to possible bugs that have up until then had no access because these sheaths are quite tough. But in this case, I cut my sheath because of the time of year. It was getting a lot, a lot of sun a lot of dry winds were also in the vicinity of this orchid and it is not the dry winds that were drying my sheath up but it was making the sheath tougher and tougher so I was getting a little bit concerned that it is possible because of my conditions being so dry and the lack of humidity in the air that my buds may actually be struggling in there and that is why I snipped it off a little bit at the top but right at the top and just opened it up a bit so that the buds have a chance to get out. I do this very, very rarely. Just so happens that this year, all my blooms are a little bit late in the season. We are already now into November and I can tell you that this orchid, my happy holiday, does not bloom in November based on her history. So the conditions are what need to be considered if you were to think of cutting a sheath. 
Be very, very careful to just snip the top part that you can see in the shadow where there is no shadow. Snip the top part and don't go too low. It's not about going as close to the buds as possible. It's just about breaking the membrane, the tough membrane of the sheath open so that the buds can then do the rest. It is very easy for them to push through after that and you want to minimize any kind of possible side effects that the buds may eventually blast because now you've exposed them too soon to the elements. And it could be that my buds in here are going to blast, maybe one, maybe two, maybe not all of them, maybe none of them, but it is a risk to cut the sheaths. And if I can recommend anything, only do it if it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. For me, the risk is far too high. I am not comfortable with having had to do this, but I wasn't comfortable with not doing it either. So I weighed myself the 50-50 odds of being able to have my buds push through and bloom as opposed to being angry with myself that they didn't manage to go through because the conditions are currently very adverse to having any kind of help from ambient humidity. Another thing about sheaths, we might as well just use this orchid. You see, this is also a sheath. A sheath, 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 sheath. And as I mentioned before, a sheath is that protects anything that is growing from within. The job of this sheath is done. And this is where it is also advisable to peel it off, depending again on your climate. How safe are you with regards to humidity? Have you got enough of it? Have you got too much of it? Because pests can go in there and make themselves a home and over winter to then activate in the spring again. So when the sheath is like this, very dry, it comes off very, very easily. You don't want to be pulling sheaths off too prematurely because there's still too much going on in there. It's far too weak to be exposed to anything. It can incur sunburn and also crack the pseudobulb if it's removed too soon. Once a pseudobulb is hardened, then it is okay to pull the sheaths back. Sometimes I pull the sheaths back when they are already turning from a good crispy green and they're going to a hay yellow, but they still have substance to them. They turn a little bit sticky. And if that happens, I already start to pull the sheath off only to allow a little bit of aeration between what is the sheath and what is the structure of the pseudobulb so that there is no risk of rot. Let me show you an example of a dendrobium where I can do that at this point. So this is Dendrobium nefertz alex poli, and it is a great example for how many sheaths are protecting this growth as the growth grows. It's like layer upon layer upon layer. And you can see the higher we go, the greener the sheath still is. But down below, you can see the sheath is starting to form a hay-colored yellow. So there's still substance in this sheath. It is still very, very soft. It is not as papery as what we saw previously. But let me show you, if you can see it, how much water is in there. And that is not from watering. I hope you can see that liquid. I hope I can get that close up on camera so you can see how much it glistens. And if there isn't enough airflow around, this is going to be causing a problem. This is still very immature tissue, but it is wet and not wet from watering. This is the tissue itself. Now this is great because at this point in time is when the orchid starts to produce roots. This softens everything. The membranes get softened, the cell structure gets softened, and then the roots can actually penetrate through this membrane and get into the media or, you know, start crawling along the mount, etc. So if this membrane were not to soften, it would make it much more difficult for the roots to go where they need to go and they would start growing up the cane. But in our case, at least in my case here, this is something where I start to look and check the color of my sheaths at the base. And if they look like this and they are already starting to look a hay color, I take them off just to make sure that whatever wet and damp is in there will not affect and rot my growth out at the bottom. Very, very important, in my opinion, for winter temperatures to watch your sheaths on the new growths. And the point is not to remove them all. 
but to relieve the base of the orchid from the wet, sticky substance that the sheath will provide, especially when it starts to kick into action with root growth. You can avoid rot very, very easily just by opening up a little bit at the base there. But you see what kind of protection the sheaths do provide all the way up to the new growth. So just be mindful, sheaths are great up to a certain point, but they can pose certain little dangers as well. And all we need to do is just release a little bit at the base, bring some air into that area and everything's fine again. Another example where sheaths are ready to come off is my Prostechia here, Cochleata. You see how easy that is? And know that the bulb back here, yes, it is mature, but it is very, very sensitive and it should not be exposed to too much high light too soon because it will burn. So if you're going to remove sheaths, at this stage, A, you get a cleaner removal of the sheath from the bulb. It's not that papery nonsense that you then have to also mist and wet. But know that the bulb here is still very, very tender and not ready for everything that air or sun would throw at it. But this is also an example of getting it out and you can see that getting that sheath softened as the orchid does it, the roots can start to penetrate through. And these guys also produce sheaths for blooming. So another thing here with sheaths is your sheath can be there for six to eight months. Just because a sheath is showing doesn't mean woohoo in the next four to six weeks my orchid will bloom. These sheaths will be now there until the orchid is ready to bloom but at least it is a positive sign that blooms will be coming, but it doesn't mean that they're coming anytime soon. Blooms will come when they come in the season according to the orchid's rhythm. Sheaths will be there when an orchid matures a growth. Now we also have the example of a sheath within a sheath. And you can see on the Cattleya maxima, there is a shadow in that sheath, but those aren't buds. That is a double sheath. Double protection, I'm happy for that. My darling Maxima is very well protected if the buds ever start to form. Same thing for a Guatemalensis. There's a sheath within a sheath. Very easy to distinguish a sheath within a sheath because it is a rounded shadow. If you were to see buds in that shadow, they would be a little bit more pointy. There would be a, like a tip or two tips. So a sheath within a sheath is easy to say. I don't want to burst anybody's bubble if they see a shadow like this. That is just part of what this orchid does to protect her bud or buds. So rounded is a sheath within a sheath, pointy, that is buds. So we're not at the bud stage just yet. But here I want to show you my Rincolalia digbiana crossed with Coilostylus ciliaris. I'll put the name up on the screen. I always forget that name. I'm just so into my Digbianas and my Ciliaris, so that's how I remember it. But look at this. You can see a sheath within a sheath, and when that opens, buds. And you can see also by the amount of light this orchid is getting that sheaths will show anthocyanin, and buds will show anthocyanin. And this is where it is a critical time as well to protect the buds as they are out of the sheath. You don't want to crisp them up and burn them. So yes, light is important for an orchid to bloom, but you can see by the color of the sheath as it transforms and gets more and more anthocyanin that you need to be a little bit more careful with the light levels. Some sheaths will normally have a lot of anthocyanin in them as a characteristic of the orchid, but that would also reflect on the leaves. So if the leaves are very, very green, but you're starting to see anthocyanin on your sheath, pull back, the orchid is going to bloom anyway, you've come to this stage, there's no need to push it. There's no need to risk anymore. You've got your buds on the way. But this is a good example of a sheath within a sheath and then buds. Let's get some blooms into this video. This is my golden cellar, but it's an example of having had a blind sheath. This won't bloom. And as I mentioned before, with my pastoral innocence, it won't bloom, even though the next growth bloomed and the sheath is starting to go a little bit of a hay colored yellow. It was green a couple of days ago, but you see, just because she's blooming here now, that sheath will always be blind. So that's an unfortunate thing. You think you've got a sheath, the orchid is now blooming, woohoo! But that doesn't mean that the previous growth 
will also trigger a bloom. It'll just remain a blind sheath, but isn't she pretty? My Brassolalia Cattleya Golden Cellar. We will feature her in other videos, but for the time being, a little bit of a bloom interlude. <laughs> So when it comes to the Oncidium Alliance, as with the reed stem epidendrums and other orchids, there are sheaths all over the place. This is Aliciara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And down here, yep, these are sheaths, lots of them. Layer upon layer upon layer, just like with the dendrobium, protecting what is growing inside, which would be a pseudobulb. And then when the pseudobulb forms, eventually the sheaths at the base will start to go hay yellow and dry off. And that is a good time to start getting rid of those as well because they're still tender and they're not as difficult to peel off as when it starts to go super dry and more damage can be done by ripping too strongly. So peeling those off will also sometimes expose a new growth. So be very, very careful when you're messing around at the base of your orchid with regards to your sheaths and peeling them off. There can already be another new growth starting Usually, usually, when the orchid has finished blooming, doesn't have to be the case. So as a general rule, if you're peeling off sheaths or anything like that, looking in there very, very carefully, because when it comes to these Oncidium Alliance, these intergeneric complex hybrids, they will already start working on a new growth. And you don't want to be pulling that off when you pull the sheaths off. Another sheath factor here are these guys. You see, as the spike grew, there's a sheath and a sheath. And then as the buds form, there's another sheath. So also be mindful of that. It's not just cattleyas that have sheaths. There are sheaths everywhere. And these are also little things where pests can hide and bury themselves and become a nuisance. And then the spike dries up or the buds blast because there was pests in here. So I always recommend that very carefully once again to go and have a look-see at candidate orchids that do attract pests around their buds and blooms. Just check and pull back that sheath. Now, this is a very, very great candidate for this example because I want to show you something. If you still have time, if you're still with me, look. Gorgeous blooms, hey? Beautiful, love them. And now look at the back. Okay, anybody queasy? Look away. You see all those bugs back there? And even though the sheaths have been pulled back, so check the blooms in the back for pests because even when the sheaths are pulled away, there are some candidates that will attract bugs even though the rest of the orchid is clean but at least you've got blooms. And if you did not pull this back, many of these buds would have blasted because this is a candidate that just attracts bugs like no tomorrow. And they will hide whether they'll be at the base here or they will hide in the sheaths as the spike grows. And they will take out your spike very, very quickly because again, the most tender part of the orchid is the new growth, the new spike. It's juicy and sweet and delicious and easy, easy to chew into. My little magic wand here. New growth, sheath within a sheath within a sheath. Now, in contrast to what I said before about sheaths that are protecting buds and they show signs of anthocyanin, there's a little bit different here. And this is anthocyanin on new growths all along the sheath. And that is because of light, once again, lots of light on this new growth. But I don't have to pull this orchid away from the light because this is a different kind of sheath and it's just protecting the new growth and the pseudobulb that is in there. It is not going to burn my pseudobulb as a, or destroy a bud in this instance. So if you see this happening on a sheath around the base of a growth, it's absolutely fine. Light levels are amazing and hopefully it'll bloom one day. But this is not a risk factor to any kind of blooming. It is just an indicator of good light for the orchid. So anthocyanin around growths, not a problem. Anthocyanin around sheaths that are on green leafed orchids, that is where I would then say, she's gonna bloom, pull her back, give her some space, don't burn that sheath or fry the buds inside. You see, there is a microclimate happening here. 
lots of humidity, lots of protection, lots of hormones being pumped in. This is my Cattleya Intermedia, and she has the most gorgeous growth, which to me looks like a heart with a sheath in it. Again, she may not bloom until spring, but you see that a sheath can come even though the growth is not mature. But that is not a guarantee she's going to bloom until such a time that it has her season to bloom. But I wanted to show you this growth and say thank you so much for watching via this growth because it has that heart. And I would do the two hearts with my hands, but one hand is not functioning properly, so <laughs> bear with me. But I'll show you something else that I did with this growth because I thought it was just beautiful. So I really appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. If I haven't covered anything, as always, you know the drill. Please use the comments below, ask any questions. I hope you found this interesting as well and learned a little bit about sheaths, where they are, and that it's not always about a single specific sheath that we think of when we think of sheaths. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.